Haru and Yuki. Yuki Haru. Haru and Yuki. Yuki Haru. The Oxen Rat Podcast, also known as Oars. All right, what up, people? It is the first episode of the Ox and Rap Podcast, Oars for short. I am joined here with my boy, Perry D. Rat. Perry, you want to say something to the people? Hey, how everybody doing today? Ready for a great, great, great podcast episode. First one, and fuck Morgan. <laughs> you know, I'm glad I played that song in the beginning. Cause you, you, could, you could have got me demonetized, boy. I'm on the main channel, too. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Nah, we good. We 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 passed the thirty second threshold. We good. Whew. I'm pretty sure that was thirty seconds, but uh, yeah. Uh, this episode, uh, we got a lot of relevations with Rain and some of the backstory between Akito. But the first place I think I want to go is talking about the opening for Fruits Basket because there was some cool things in there. If you notice. Uh, so like, what are what are your first impressions on the opening? Just on like the song and the visuals. Uh, I really love the song, and when I first watched it, I didn't notice anything different about it. But then my second rewatch, I noticed that like Kisa and um ha- and Haru, that Haru, Kisa and Haru was like a lot taller than, than what they usually were. And I was like, wait, wait, yeah. why are they so much taller? Because they, they look more mature. And I was like, wait, wait, what? Then I kept watching it, and I seen uh, Momoji was taller too. I was like, oh, everybody um grew up in opening, bruh. When I seen, when I, cause I did a live reaction to it. When I first just like went, I didn't, cause I didn't really pay attention to the open the first time, but then I went back just to see what they showed in the visuals. When I went back and I, I seen a kid, I seen that blonde kid. I said, I said, is that my, is that my son Momiji? He has grown like this. I was like, yo, he went from being like, a, you know, he's, he's only one year older than like the main cast, Toru. Kyo, Yuki, but he's always been like the like mascot short character. But mm-hmm. then I'm looking I look at him in the open, I'm like, yo, how did he grow up like this? Like what like what is the time frame in the last time we seen Momiji? Oh, that'd be awkward. Like this is next time we see him in school, he just a tall he just tall now. Like, yeah. wait, what happened? That growth spur hit different. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because uh I one person I talk to about Fruits Basket all the time is my friend Francesca. And she was talking about how Momiji should have been a lot taller, but they kind of kept him the same size, kind of like that Goten and Trunks effect that they do in the Dragon Ball Super, where they like never grow. Like yeah. he, he just wasn't growing. So I I do think we're going to see like a, a completely different Momiji once we see him. But yeah, it will be awkward because I don't think there was a lot of time, if any, that passed in between the last time we seen him. I can't think of the last time we seen him, but what was it the beach? Was that the last time we saw? Uh, last time we saw Momichi. I actually feel like that, no. It was actually it was student, definitely the, after the beach. The student, it wasn't a student thing. The student uh, festival. We seen him in there. I can't remember. Yeah, you're right. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. We, we seen him. We seen him at the yeah, student festival. We all seen when he gave, gave um Kuano the um the, the tape. Yeah, that's the last time we seen him. Yeah, yeah. When he got uh, the tape, and he was extremely short then. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's up with Momiji. But the other thing I noticed with the visuals, like, first of all, it just looks good. I like the song. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I'll, I'll talk about that other thing later. But uh, where where would you, like, rank it in terms of just, like, the opening music? Uh, it's kind of different from everything else because I think Prism was very slow. Like, most of the songs are very slow. Like, I think the very, the very first songs are kind of slow, slow paced. And then the second song we get in a season usually more fast paced. Yeah. But this was completely different than like the other tones of the songs. It was more like fast paced, more upbeat. And I was like, okay, okay, yeah. like a little bit of rap going on. Like, all right. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of surprised me. Uh, mm. I want to give a shout out to the people in the chat real quick before I go into what I want to say. Shout out to Joker Morgan. Uh, AOT fan sixty nine, my boy Shane Tootie stunt 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 stunners stunners. I I, I know I, I screwed up your name bad, but you know, hey, it is what it is. Um, I was gonna say the other thing I noticed with the visuals is the fact that, all right, <laughs> okay, so all right, so 
Well, like, what was the what was the theme that you noticed in the visuals? Because there was a theme in there. It's like two. I, was, uh, I I don't think I got the theme to be honest. It, it's 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 something simple. It's, it's nothing like elaborate. The first thing is oh, like okay, okay. Well, what, like can you say the pairings? Because like most people yeah, yeah. pair to each other. Yeah, yeah. The most of the people that we've seen, like we've seen oh. Yuki and uh, we've seen Yuki and Machi. We've seen Toru and uh, Kyo in the same shot. We've seen. Hero and Kisa in the same shot. Uh, Akito and Shigure. Like, the parents. Like, that was one th- one theme I noticed. The other theme I noticed was they were showing all the Zodiacs, right? Mm-hmm. Who was missing? The GOAT, man. Ritsu, man. Bro. They hold my man down. They trying to lock that ape <laughs> up, man. What? Dog, what do they have against Ritsu? I am sick and tired of this show forgetting about Ritsu. Like, Ritsu does not exist, exist bro. Like, anytime, like, <laughs> Ritsu has, like, no relevance to the plot. And it's yeah, like, okay, yeah. okay, fine. Don't have any relevance to the plot. Whatever. Just be a fill-in for the Zodiacs. But you can't even put him in the opening? Yeah, that this, this is wild. Now that you say it, it sounds so wild. Bro, it's... I, I don't know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Risu did. I don't know what the the voice actor did something to uh the mangaka in the past, but bro, Risu just do, does not get any love. It's crazy. Uh uh 2D said not my favorite OP, but it's not bad. It's probably my third favorite opening in the series. Prism is by far still my favorite one in just in terms of like the music. I, I I think the best visuals were was the last opening for uh, season two though, but I I really like the visuals here too because they had like that three D thing going where like the the camera was like panning around. It kind of reminded me of uh, I think it was Bleach opening seven. No what Bleach opening. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it like opening seven or opening nine that like did the same kind of camera effect that I like. But yeah, they they did Ritsu dirty. Um, my my son Momiji grew up. Hero looks a lot older too. Uh, but let let's let's talk about the content and episode there. Uh, first we go we gonna get to the biggest thing. What are your first impressions of Rain? Uh, oh, my first impression of Rain. Ah oh, man, I think she's like one of the few characters that was kind of like hyped up, and I feel like she delivered every everything. Really, like, yeah, I, th- I think she delivered because, like, it was one of the things was like she was hyped up, and then like we actually see her, and you see how how bad she got on Akito skin. You like, oh yeah. I, when I first seen, I was like, yeah, this is a final villain right here. She got that final villain swagger, talking shit. Yeah. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> she had it. She had everything you need. Yeah, I think Rain has the same thing that I like about Akito, in that they don't really even have to do anything. It's just the vibe that you get when they come on screen like you just get like this eerie feeling when they show up like just in the music and the lighting of the scene because when you see rain you can't like you can't see her it's so dark and i think that's, mm-hmm. they were trying to give you that the atmosphere of this person is like the same you know the same ilk of akito you know their their blood so yeah yeah i uh rain has been a character that is been talked about but out of focus because it's easy to completely ignore the fact that she was talked about she was talked about on two different occasions the first time when um oh well yeah yeah the first time i think i think both of them were with shigure but we saw like during the beach art when she when her name was mentioned and you know they said that she was causing havoc in the soma estate that's when akito freaked out so right then and there you knew that was a character that was going to greatly impact akito and in this episode bruh (laughs) (laughs) man akito turned to a wwe superstar she was trying to she chokeslammed that ass Like I, I swear, when I first see that scene, I thought it was I thought I watched a different, a completely different show. Cause like the animation between her just dragging her across the room and then just up in the air, I was like, God damn, Akito, uh, let her go. Listen, man, <laughs> hey, she, she, I, like I was shook. Cause I was like, 
it, it was so funny too because before that scene happened, I was like, bro, who 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 talks to Akito like this? <laughs> like a date that was already <laughs> the reveal of when they said uh, Rain was her mother. But I was like, damn, nobody ever talks to Akito like this. This is the first time she gets like grilled and niggas can be completely honest with her. And then Akito said, what the fuck? All that shit put her in the cho- put in the the, the Itachi chokehold. Push the ass through three doors and then the leap. She jumped with that. She had her in the choco though entire time. Jumped with her and then slammed her to the ground. I was like, bro, that's like, that's like some Dragon Ball shit. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> that was wild. But yeah, she she knows how to get under her skin. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> so Darius said, uh, shout out to Sidarius Kako and Light in the chat and uh, Young Mac. Uh, so Darius said, "Rent a baddie." I agree. I, of course, um, I'll, I'll put. I'll, I might put it in my top five. I don't know. I might. Top, I might. Top five by five. Uh, but my, you know, Kyoko in my top five. Um, hmm. I think Rain is in my top five too. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Rain could be in my top five. I'm pretty sure. But one thing they said about her was that she stays inside all the time and that's probably based on orders from akito because we we don't she doesn't like her interacting with the zodiacs in general and um mm-hmm. why do you think that is exactly well at first i thought it was because like uh at first i thought it was because uh she she broke Kurano's curse but I don't think that's the case anymore because even Corano himself, when last season he mentioned that like um, he he don't know how it happened. Yeah. So I guess Akito is just wor- worried about women in general because she. I think Akito's thing is like because she couldn't be a woman when she was growing up, she despised women like as a result of that mm. because they they able to do stuff that she's not allowed to do because Ren told her not to. So I guess that's kind of like her thing, and I think it's mostly because like maybe. Rain sees the I keep the bonds of the zodiacs as something filthy, unnatural. Yeah, and she feels like they should be um, um cut out. While Akito thinks like these are my bonds, these are my possessions, they're mine. Don't don't interfere. Yeah, kind of thing. I do. Think... And it could be a thing. Oh, oh go ahead, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll say it could be a thing where it's like one of the things was like um Rain has been so pivotal in um Akito's life that she's like, you took away my choice to uh, be a girl. I'm not letting you take these away from me as well. Mm, okay that that's a real good point that's a good real good point because i was full on on the I, I still am on that side but yeah i think you raise good points like bringing up like akito we see is just obsessed with keeping this bond with the zodiacs one thing that stayed consistent with her character is like she believes in the idea of fate and this unchanging bond between them like everything is going to stay permanent that's why she even allowed Toru into um into Shigure's house because she believes in the end Yuki, Shigure, and all the other Zodiacs will come back to her eventually. So I think Ren Rain is someone who kind of challenged that challenges that idea. And maybe that's why she's so opposed to her. But I still do think that Rain had something to do with the curse breaking. Maybe she's not a direct cause of it. But she at least knows something about how that curse can be broken just because of, like, you know, how she feels about it. And also the fact that at the end of the episode, we saw her linking up with Reen. And uh, you, we, we already know what Reen plans to do. And Rain said, you know, I know what you're trying to do. I can help with that. So, you know, the only way she could be able to help with what Reen is trying to do is knowing about that curse and how to break it. So, oh, speaking about that, I was after I watched the episode, I went back and watched a few of the Reen episodes, uh, Reen episodes, and I realized that Reen and Ren met met before when she was younger. I've been posting it, um, uh, through basket chat. Yeah, in a in a flashback when she went to her two parents, there's a character with long black hair that she kind of like, uh she kind of like entered it's, it's a weird it's she kind of like i know i know exactly what scene you're talking about she kind of like introduce mm-hmm. it, she introduces her to her uh parents so like they've they're acquainted with each other and it, it always yeah. it was always weird to me too because um 
you can link them together because of that and also like when akito pushed rain out the window uh like fir first there there's names are similar oh hold on the food coming through give me 30 seconds okay All right, but, but, but. i'll go to the chest here by doing Minute. Hey, shout out Rant for coming through. I know he don't watch Fruit Basket, but good to see him showing support. Uh, 2D <laughs> Sunter says Kako's top one. Personally, I respect it. I respect it. He also said Rena Baddie for real, for real. He right. He's he right. Uh. Shane says Saucy reaction to the choke slam clip killed me. The I was I was shook. I wasn't expecting like I the funny thing is I already know how violent Akito is, but like that particular scene, just seeing it in action, because they don't really get too graphic with it. Like graphic in terms of like being explicit with it. Cause like when she hurt uh Hatori's eye, like you don't really like see it, see it. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you see him like you see like the aftermath of it, but you don't really see too much of it in action. Uh, and like when Kisa got injured, you don't get to see that either. You just see her in the hospital. But like here, we we see <laughs> we see her facial expression as she's choking her out, going through the three doors, jumping up like Michael Jordan slamming her on a cane. Shit, I was like, bro, nah, I, I, I can just <laughs> wow. Uh, that's where we had it. She like, now let me go. Let me beat that bitch ass. Let me go. I was like, damn. <laughs> you know what? That that also killed me too because Rain kept talking shit after that. I was like, I was like, yeah. Rain. I was like, Rain. You just got choked out. Like you, don't, I think you want to shut up now. You you might want to stop talking. But she nah, choked she you said, out again. Let, let, me, nah, let her go. Let me let me talk to him. I'm trying to let her the truth, man. These bonds ain't real. You ain't real. <laughs> Duh. man. Oh yeah, that was another thing too. Who do you think Akira is? Because that person was mentioned in this episode. And correct me if I'm wrong, but has has that name been mentioned before? I don't think so. I, it, it never, on my rewatch, I didn't mention. I didn't remember seeing it, nothing like that. But I think that could be Akito's dad. Yeah, I feel like that has to be the only, the only thing. Just because of the way Rin like um uh was talking about him about like how like. Um, please kill me so I could be I could be with him. Mm -hmm. um, you're not you're not. My, I don't really care about you. I want to be with my husband. Like I feel like she had like I want to be with my husband kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was figuring that it's either one or two things. It's just it's either Akito's father and um, Rain's husband, or it's like God Himself. Like they they gave him mm -hmm. a name or something like that because they also look similar to the God that we see. Um, you know, I, I guess make the initial promise with all the Zodiacs where, you know, like we saw in the beginning of the episode, them sitting in that circle and doing that yeah. ritual. Um, one, one or two of those things. I don't think we can get much just from their dialogue. It seems like that person is omnipotent, though, because they talk about going to heaven to see them. And mm -hmm. what they also said to Akito, it, it feels like they are like kind of all knowing. But I'm not I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, yeah. uh, another thing with Akito and her bat stories, we saw when she was conceived. That's the reason why everybody was crying because we've seen this before yeah, yeah. with Shigure. It was like Shigure, Yame, Hatori, um, and Kareno. Uh, they all cried when she was conceived, and they immediately went up to Rain and they touched her son making it had this connection um <laughs> yeah, can, yeah can you imagine just like you you, you, you outside you got done you do what you was doing you walk up four kids touch your stomach like that's, wait what y'all doing here that's what exactly, doing here? Perry, <laughs> Perry, did, wait wait did you watch my live reaction uh no nah, i want to be fresh when we go on the podcast dog that's exactly what i said i said imagine you just you don't know you pregnant and four motherfuckers just walk up on you and touch your stomach i'd have been like nigga get the fuck off me yeah. who's kids are these yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wrong you <laughs> it was great, great funny thing is like that could have been a moment where Ritsu, Ritsu get some kind of development but they was like nah Ritsu was too young to see I'm like bro, damn he don't get nothing bro. he don't get nothing 
they do Reese's. Why would you even mention? Don't even mention that, dog. We would have like think about that. We would have never even thought about Ritsu if they never said that. Stop mentioning mm-hmm. Ritsu if you can't go do nothing with them. That like, that's, it's kind of sad how they treat Ritsu. If if I was like a Ritsu <laughs> stand, which I can't imagine anyone being, I actually seen one Ritsu stand, but bro, I would have been. Like, I would have been so sad watching Fruits Basket. Just imagine your character just don't get no type of love. Like, mm-hmm. they don't even try to include him in the plot. Like, he, he has, like, no connection to anyone outside of outside of Shigure's editor. Like, that's the only one he has, like, a real connection towards. Oh, I guess you could say Kagura, too, but... Yeah, they don't show too much of that. Ah. Uh. It was something else I was going to say about that backstory, too. Um, what exactly was it? Uh, shit, I cannot. Oh, well, I want to ask you, why do you think Rain raised Akito as a man? Is it like some cultural thing or like what would be the reason? Because that was, I really don't, they never went into that. I really don't know. I think it could be a cultural thing because I, I have seen like stories and like historical um, writings where it's like um, men are seen as the pinnacle. So mm-hmm. maybe that, that's like kind of like what they like that you need a man to, to hold the household or something like that. I can yeah. see something like that being it. Yeah, it could be like but some like, patriarchal va- values that they have because usually the man is always the head of the household. So. You know, maybe they just she didn't want a female to be in that position, so that's why she raised her as a man. But the weird thing about that is Akito follows it too. You would think that since Akito hates Rain, that she would reject those values. But I don't know. Maybe maybe they're protecting something that we don't know by uh, keeping her gender uh, her gender a secret. But. Yeah, see, like, because when, when it was first revealed that Akito was a woman, it didn't really strike me as some surprising thing because, you know, the first time I seen Ak- Akito, I thought she was a woman. And um, when it was revealed, I was just thinking about, like, what does this actually mean? The only thing it really meant for me at the time was the fact that maybe, like, maybe I can link this to why... Or to I can link this to Akito's hatred for women in general, and maybe that's why she presents herself as a man. But mm-hmm. that's that's only to do with her character. It didn't have any, it didn't have any lasting effect on the plot as a whole. But I but I think maybe it will later because I think them saying Shigure, Hatori, Ayame, and Kareno being the only ones that know that she's a woman. I think that's going to come into play later on. So, I guess yeah. it's just a matter of time to see him. Um, uh, Muppet said, I'm a Ritsu stand myself. You are, yeah, I'm up here, man. You are rare. Very rare. <laughs> um, so, we, we, we continue to talk with Kareno and Toru. And this is the first time this shit has happened, I think. Or, or one of them. Toru was not able to do shit. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is one of the few times. Like, I think it's kind of like something that's been kind of foreshadowed in like season two, about like, or just in general, like how like kind of people if they take so much in at one time, it could break them. And mm-hmm. Toru felt this firsthand because like, all the information she got, she was just like broken and battered, and she know what to do. Yeah, this it, Hana said it. Uh, th- this is a little different, but Hana said, you know, that Toru can't like take on the burdens of other people and she cares too much about other people. And I think it is going to be something that weighs down her on her eventually because, you you know, like you, you look at a character like Kyo, he cares about the people that he cares about. He doesn't try to like go out of his way to be nice to other people. It's just he got he has a circle of people and that's it. Toru will see a kid lost on the street you know and this this is like a normal good thing to do but it's like yeah he she will try to save everyone and that comes at the expense of yourself because all that time that you're spending uh helping other people you're not helping yourself so it's going to weigh down on you and i think i think it's starting to show its effect on toru a little bit now just because she was kind of lost this episode but one thing I did like that she said 
what at the very end of it was that she said she's going to piece the puzzle slowly something to that effect and Mm -hmm. that reminds me of the quote or the the analogy shigure made with the laundry i think it's season one where he's saying like what would you do if you're surrounded by like a mountain of laundry and he said you know just uh and you had to wash them all he said that you would just you know pick the pick the clothes up one at a time at your feet you know just saying that sometimes when you're overwhelmed by stuff the best thing to do is not to think about it because you're going to spend more time thinking about that and agonizing over it rather than actually doing something it's kind of just like do something for the time being and i think that's something toru is going to try to do i don't know what she's going to do though because right now she's stuck in the mud like where does toru go from here yeah, she's she's like down bad for, for real. Cause like when that, when that scene happened, and then like I I see Rin just look at Rin just look at her. I'm like, oh, you help, you help your friend? You help her? You not? All right. She just she just took off. She said, oh, I got I I know you brought the curse. Let me let me find out. And then when um Hana pulled up, I was like, yes, let's go. I was so hyped, bro. Hana's Hana's uh my the funniest character for me. I don't know about you, but she is the funniest character for me. Oh yeah, she's funny. I think she called um, Yuki to him, and he she was like, um, "Toru will be mine tonight." Yeah. He's like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> you you hear say it like that? Yeah, she said she was like, "I captured Toru." <laughs> she's like, "She will mm-hmm. be mine tonight." I said, "Bro, I was like, what's wrong with you, dog?" And then she called like a uh, having like a sleep uh, like a slumber party. Uh, what what did she call it? She called a it like nightgown some, outing. Something now like that? nightgown festival. That's what she called yeah. it. Yeah, I was like. Bro, Hana is the one of the most extra niggas I've ever seen in my life. She she <laughs> got she got like just just the shit that she does. She wears like this fancy dress everywhere she goes, all black. She got the all black cup, the tea cups and shit. It was it was something else that she did too, but like Hana just extra. Hana extra for no yeah. reason. Oh no! I think the other thing she did was like her mom asked, like, "What would a turtle want to eat?" And she said she wants to eat shark fin. Yeah, and her mom's yeah. like, "That's not what. That's what you want to eat." <laughs> shark fin. Yeah, she a glutton too. Mm-mm. So yeah. Um, but yeah, her her and her brother uh, was were cheering up Toru. Utani came yeah. later, and uh, so so with the stuff with Utani, now she knows that her Kareno is Kareno Soma. So do you think that she's going to take an action for it to try to contact him or is it going to kind of sit? Uh, I, can, I can see it. I can see a moment where like she does it because I feel like she now like even though she said she's going to give up on him. I feel like their path pack on cross again. And I think she don't want Toru to like have to deal with that burden herself. So she's going to make it her kind of like job to like get it done herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. th- that, that makes a lot of sense because like Utani and Hana should know Toru's personality. Yeah. She's going to be someone who worries about them all the time to like, you know, so if they don't take ashes themselves, Toru's going to do it for them. That's just the kind of person she is. Uh, QRW6 mm-hmm. said, what up? Satsuki Kako said her mom is adorable. The Hanajima, Hanajima family is underrated. A lot of people oh, don't yeah, be yeah, talking yeah. about them, but I think like they're one of the best support supportive families in a series because it's not a lot of good parenting that goes on in Fruits Basket but they they be down for both of their kids like could you imagine having a kid with those type of powers and just like treating her like she's normal yeah and it's crazy because like they were so like they were so understanding like because I think when Hannah first did her like I take that one kid. She's like, "Do I have to go to jail?" And they're like, "No, it's not your fault." Like, like they're they're very good parents, man. They're They're very good parents. Yeah. I just don't think they get talked about too much. It's kind of they get lost in a Zodiac and Soma shuffle. So yeah, you know, I think they. But even, a lot even of love. but even even Kakagi, her mom is pretty good because she was able to like she took she took care of Kakagi really, really, really well from what we've seen, and she also took in Reen, who she didn't have to. Yeah, because like most Zodiac parents just like hate the fact that their kid could turn into like a different animal or something else. But like she just took to uh, Rini like it was nothing. Like she could stay with her. She could stay with me. Yeah, is shit. We we seen other parents of the Zodiacs. They don't they don't even take care of their own damn kids. <laughs> they yeah. if they ain't gonna take in one Zodiac, they, they damn sure ain't gonna take in two. 
So yeah. Oh, he he, he was mom as well. She she like she she loves her son. Yeah. She got she she, ass she, <laughs> Okay, well, we we got to we got to I'm going to say something about hero, but uh shout out to hero's mom she, for naming her baby Sotsky. Uh she's going to be she going to grow up <laughs> to be a goat. But all right, I know hero wasn't in the episode exactly, but I understand not like a hero. I did not like him in, in his initial showing. He was asshole, like you said. Mm-hmm. But I got to respect Hero because he drives the plot forward a lot. And what I mean by that is when when we look at Toru, it's easy to forget that she is a flawed type of character. Like her taking on a lot of things in of itself, while it's commendable and you like, you like her for it, it's also to the detriment of herself. And I think that's something that Hero exposed in that episode because it's kind of like you're so nice to the fault that you don't even speak up for yourself a lot of the times. And, you know, like him taking him taking her wallet and all of that shit, like it, Toru not doing anything about it until like other people had to step in, like Momiji and Kyo, I think, you know, what exposed that flaw of her character. Yeah, and I think one of the best moments in like Fruit Basket was like when Rain, uh, Rain was talking about like how like Hatsuharu is someone who could like help her like I think she was described like as a, as a box like you, you hold stuff deep inside the box but you need somebody to like gently uh, o- gently open it up for you more and more and she was talking about like how Toru even though she seems nice she needs somebody like a uh, Hatsuharu who's gonna open that box up for her because she needs to get rid of that baggage as well. Yeah, she has not vented about her mother properly to anybody yet. And that's mm-hmm. the thing that haunts her to this day. Even the way, like, while it, like, there, there'll be some cute moments, but just the fact that if something happens to the picture that she carries around uh, of her mother, of Kyoko, she will act like it is her mother. She has such a strong attachment to her that she kind of, like, she tries to, like, disconnect from her death, I try, I, I, I feel. And that's mm-hmm. not that's not healthy. I don't think she's properly moved on from that yet. And I think given Kyo's connection to Kyoko, uh, we both are of the same mind that uh, Kyoko was directly involved in her death. Like uh, we both think you like correct me if I'm wrong. We both think that like Kyoko died for Kyo, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So it's like uh, I think that's something also Kyo hasn't opened up about. So I think he's like the perfect person for Toru to like vent about her mother and properly like let things go. Um, One thing, nothing happened in this episode about it, but I want to know what's up with Katsuya. What is up with Toru's dad? What's up with her pops? Yeah, like I don't, it's, he's, he's such a, a weird character. Cause I remember when I rewatched, like even his, even his Katsuro's dad was like, um, he has very um, particular, he was very peculiar traits, and then they had the cat in the scene as well. And I think that cat was supposed to symbolize something, but I don't know what it is though. For me, I think the cat, because if you remember in that scene, remember uh, like Toru had fell down the street and Kyo was there. Mm-hmm. I think that cat was just showing you that Kyo, Kyo was near, because you know. Uh, all the animals of their respective zodiac spirit, they attract those animals. So I think that cat, it, yeah. it could have been something that connected to Katsuya, but all, I think like it just shows you that Kyo was near because the cat like got up and then it, it kind of left. And oh, I think it was going to okay. I, I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah. there's one thing in the map so I, I, I um, realized was like, I think this is the first time that we actually got confirmation that there's like two people living in the somas. Like, well, not two people living, in it, but it's like an extra, there's like an actual spirit is conscious of like things. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a different entity inside them. Yeah. This episode kind of like reinforced that, and I, and it kind of like opened the doors for more possibilities. Because especially with like interaction between like a young Yuki and a young Hatsuhara, and like why Hatsuhara was so mad at him. Like, it, it could be like mm. the spirit inside it is just like dictating their emotions and, okay. and why they're upset. Okay, that's 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 a real good point. That that that's the thing. I'm glad you brought that up because that that brought me to another point I want to talk about when we we're discussing Akito's backstory. We found out that the spirit wasn't actually inside them into until Akito was conceived. 
So, mm. like that, that kind of threw me for a loop because I thought the spirit was going to be in, in, in them regardless. Like I thought it was a continuous loop, but the spirit wasn't there until Akito was born. So, like that raises a lot of questions. That the first question I thought of is, so who was the previous head of the Somas and were they also God or was like, who, who was God before, before Akito or was there a God before Akito? But the fact that these are supposed to be unchanging bonds, I feel like there has to be one, but I don't know if that's ever going to be talked about. Yeah. Cause it also feels like that, like, uh, they have some kind of influence of their actions too, because I think when like um, Akito was conceived, everybody walked up to everybody walked up to like um, um, Ren and was and was like, "We'll meet you soon," or "I'll meet you soon." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it kind of go deeper to like the connections that they actually have. Yeah. So <clears throat> now that we got Rain in the story, what do you think exactly happened to make Akito snap? Because there was a time where. Yuki noted that while Akito had her tantrums, she was never as bad as the Akito we know now. So what do you think could have possibly happened in in between that time where like she was, you know, all right to like crazy? I think it has to be the Kueno thing because like I was trying to like kind of like piece together the Fruit Basket timeline. And I feel like that's the only major event that we've seen that will kind of make you go go that way. Yeah, but it, it, could, it also could be something else because I feel, I feel like Akito change probably after that after Karina lost his curse, but then like when when next time we see Akito as a kid, she's like the world is darkness, the world is darkness. Um, I'm by my like I, I can see that being like a natural reaction to like losing one of your bonds and like okay, bet I have to keep everybody close. You can't come in like you know what I mean? Yeah, I like, keep everything close. Yeah, being obsessive. Yeah, I think I definitely think it was the the curse breaking because we we see how she's so attached to everybody and it became a thing of now I'm going to take away everyone's freedom because I don't want them also to have their, the curse broken. And from her reaction to that, I don't think Akito knows exactly how the curse broke either. Uh, Mm. We, we, we still don't know for me. I I feel like the curse is going to have to involve some type of sacrifice or something like that. I feel like it has to be something big for, the curse is to be broken. I do think everybody's curse will be broken eventually, but again, like the method is going to be very important later on. Um, I wonder if Katsuya I, is involved in that. I think it has to be said something with their eyes because I remember when, like, um, I, when Quino broke his curse, she, she, she looked, at, she looked, uh, when Quino broke the, the curse, Akito looked at her, looked at his eyes and she noticed something was gone. And I remember she mentioned something similar in like Yuki's eyes. Like she like when at um the um uh, Zodiac uh festival, she knows it was something Yuki I was completely different. Yeah. And maybe I, maybe the signs of, like the curse breaking, like he was breaking free of his curse. I think with her seeing something in their eyes, what I got from that was them like feeling free from the shackles that that are that is Akito. Cause when by the time Akito got to that scene where she noticed the change in Yuki, this is when he's when he's when he actively changed himself. He joined the student council. Uh, he confronted his mother, which was something big. He uh, mm-hmm. just became a more open person. And, you know, he even talked about seeing Toru as a mom, which is like a big uh, a big thing that he's been concealing within himself. So I think he just felt like, and even after that scene, Yuki said something like, you know, I would never come back to your side. So I think that was just Yuki while the curse is still there. I think mentally he is free from Akito. Like he, he knows mm-hmm. that he'll, he'll never just, he'll never go back to her. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that's, what she notes with the change in the eyes maybe that's like a a requirement for the curse to be broken but I, it can't be that either because again Carano's curse just broke it just it just happened for him yeah. he, he didn't know it. Yeah. yeah oh uh Kako says both Toru and Akito want unchanging bonds for themselves Toru her mother and Akito the Zodiac similarities I can, I can see that I've noticed that though I've noticed that yeah, like like I said, Toru is obsessively attached to Kyoko. 
And mm. we remember with the one beach arc in a, in a beach arc where she's like clutching a photo of her mother that she's like, we'll always be together like that. Yeah, like, that was a scary scene. Like I said, she still has not moved on from her death. She acknowledges that she died, but she mm. hasn't like properly moved on from it. I don't I don't believe so. I, I do think uh, Toru and Akito are they have some certain similarities to uh to also show the contrast of those characters like the dark side and the light side of those two characters um mm. but i think R- rain's involvement in the story is going to paint akito in a more sympathetic light like you you see how hatori and kareno treats akito they treat her like a a, a crying child basically i mm. think you know i think you can't really do that unless rain is put more to the fro- forefront as the villain because yeah. you you can't really like like after all the shit akito has done you can't really excuse that and you don't re- you don't have to excuse it period but you can't really feel sympathy for her unless there's somebody in the back of her that you feel is pulling the strings or is the cause of her acting like that you know so i think that's the purpose yeah. of rain I also feel like, because um, even the scene with Hattori and Akito in this episode, it kind of rem- made it seem like they like Hattori wasn't the one in control. It was like his his own experience was telling him, you know, confront her or give her a hug, give her a hug, give her a hug. I don't know if you get that same kind of feeling when you seen that when you seen the episode. My 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 vibe was the vibe that I get with uh, Kareno. I feel like they, I feel like they don't like Akito, but. They see her as a child, so like when when they see her crying or something like that, they they actually feel like they genuinely feel bad for her. I I feel like when they see her crying, it's more of just like a human emotion thing. I don't think it has to do with the curse. I may be wrong on that. We'll probably see, but <clears throat> I think that's why Kareno stays with her uh, in the first place because you know his curse is broken. He does not yeah. have to stay with Akito at all. He can go with he could be with utani do whatever he wants but it's out of just pure obligation that he does it yeah but she did kind of guilt with the man she she did trap him oh man yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She trapped yeah. Him. <laughs> yeah. i mean listen listen akito ain't trapping me i don't, I don't give <laughs> akito ain't tra- i love akito but she is not trapping me like I, you, you got me fucked up. The minute that curse broke, I would have been like, "Word, I'm gone." <laughs> what, like, what am I still doing <laughs> here? Like, I'm gone. I'm you've, gone. You've, you've been like, I know you, it's been a while, but you've seen like Aladdin when like the genie gets free, the chains yeah. go away. I'm gone. I'm zippity zoop. Yeah, for real. Like, <laughs> like, like, bro, I'm not gonna stay in this abusive shit. So you could just slap. Like she slapped him in the episode and hugged him. Man, get the fuck out of here. I'm gone. I'm a, I'm a back for Shugure. Because that man, like, I can't never get shit around here, man. I ain't Bro. the famous Zodiac. I ain't the runner up. Like, he, <laughs> he, that man is in love he, for real. He is that boy down bad. Because, like, Yuki's ahead of him. Kureno's definitely ahead of him. Like, he. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad for Shigure. Like,. I got I got to see how he fell in love with Akito, bro. Like, what what did you see in Akito? Like, not only yeah. is there an age gap, but it's just like what like what good qualities did did you see in Akito that make you like go like, damn, she the one. <laughs> I gotta know. <laughs> I gotta know, man. Let me let me find out something about you, Shigure. <laughs> All these other girls great, you could have had, man, man, boy. At at one point he had Mayuko. Yeah, 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 come on, man, get the fuck out of here, Shigure. Yeah, but I think, um, especially Mayuko, she was like, I, I, I'm glad she was able to like, kind of like, she knows the true Shigure. She know like, hey, yo, man, I want to hate you people like who you really love. Yeah, good you people like you really love, like, like, like you hate you hate them. And Akito is kind of like noticing that as well. She don't notice it, but she's like, sees like, yeah, man, you treat me like shit. Shigure is like, mm, I guess. <laughs> it, I, I think it's more Phil just trying to manipulate manipulate things because we we see like he's he always does things in the background like he noticed when toru was spending the night at Hannes, he was like damn uh did 
the the news fucked you up that bad. So like he like he he's the one who brought Carreno to her. Like he's always pulling yeah. the strings, doing things here and there. Uh, and I think he, he's trying to break the curse too. But I think it's for Akito's sake. So and maybe it's for his sake as well too. Maybe he feels like the curse is her her um connection to everybody else is the reason why they can't be together so uh yeah i, I, I could see a, a plot point was like he breaks everybody's curse but his own so i keep that was just left with him yeah it, it depends on how it's broken i don't know yeah though. uh was there yeah, anything yeah, else i wanted to say uh we already talked about the tiny thing uh do you think hana is gonna like it is Hana's a weird character to me because I feel like with her powers she can do, she can be introduced or she can be connected to any plot point in the series because she literally can pop up out of nowhere and we're not going to question it. <laughs> yeah, if she pop up, <laughs> if she pop up in a sober state, I'm not going to say shit. I'm just like, oh, that's just Hana. Because that's because because I, I don't know if this episode talked about it. I could just be imagining it, but then they talk about like how like her, like I don't know if they brought the idea, but maybe her powers could like break the curse. I I don't think so. I just, okay, okay. I think the only thing they talked about with her powers was hearing Toru cry. I think that was it. Yeah. Because I want to see the interaction between like so much, like I wanted this like, uh, Hana's powers have the connection to like um, the so much state of some way, like God or some some things. Because she's like the only one with that power. Yeah. So I. I wonder is like is there something some kind of connection there? Uh, yeah, cause yeah, cause make make me has his powers too, but it's not like it's not on the same level as Hana's. So mm-hmm. yeah, like it, it'll be interesting to see if Hana's going to be directly involved with the Somas, cause she's not directly involved. She's like indirectly involved with them. Like she's yeah, she goes to school with Yuki and Kyo, but again, it's that's separate from what goes on with the Soma State stuff. She's not really involved in that until Toru herself is involved. So I wonder if she'll, she'll take the initiative and maybe try to do something with her powers because her powers could be used for, I don't, I don't know exactly what, but it can, it can be utilized with what's going on now. Uh, but I'm not sure. But, oh, wait, were you about to say something? Oh, no, go ahead. There was a scene. What did you feel about? Oh, shit, you got a call? Oh man, Peter on the trap phone. Um, well, I'm, I'm gonna get back to this when he, cause he gotta hear this part. Let me catch up on some of the comments while Perry sell that dope. Okay, I'm uh, back, man. I had to sell bag, man. Four for five, man. Had a deal going on. As long as you're making that money, man. You know how it is. Uh, Yandere said the old fruit, fruits basket Akito is a male. Was he just straight up a male? Because, like, I don't think the old fruits basket, like, how far did it get? Did it get to the end of season two? Because if not, then nah. that's probably why. I don't think so. I think it was season one where they stopped it. It has to be because it was, like, it was like one season, right? I think so. So, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't think they would just change Akito to a male because that, that would be like a big plot point to change. Yeah. Um, Kako said her mom is adorable. I think she was talking about. Hannah's mom, yeah, she is. Like I said, that that family's family is cool. Everything animated said, Mister Savage, what is up, EA? Um, oh yeah, okay. The point I wanted to bring up was, did you get a weird feeling when we saw Kyo? Like the first time we seen him in the episode, where he's just like, when he picks up the scarf, did you get a weird feeling from that scene? Uh. I don't think I did, but 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 yeah, okay, okay, okay. Actually, I did. I, it kind of it kind of made it seem like like he was reliving like the, the Kyoko's death scene, yeah, or, or like an accident. Yeah, that's that's the feeling I got when I watched it, and I, mm. I just I wanted to see if you had the same thing because, like, it just focused like he was in the shot right, but they also yeah. focused on the cars behind him, and then he just like kept looking at the the scarf, and there was also a scene in season one. Remember when he got like sluggish? And this was this is when like Cosma like looks on and uh, watches kill. There was a scene where him, uh, Yuki, and Toru are all like just in the middle of the street, 
right? And they're just like they're just there's a long scene of them just like standing there. So I feel like that scene was, yeah, like you said, him rel- reliving uh, Kyoko's death. That's what it oh, felt like it, to it, me. It, it could be that or his mom's death, because like because like true. we know his mom died of as well. True, true, and that's it's a good thing you brought that up because like maybe that's why. Maybe yeah, it it could be both of those, because I I think I think both of them were involved in car accidents. If I if I'm uh, I believe, I think they were both involved in car accidents. With Kyoko's mom, she just like like fell back into a truck, and then uh, we don't know the details of Kyoko's death, but I, I believe it was with the car or something. Um, so yeah, it could it could because like there was a scene like of the scarf like falling down, and then. I think a uh, car kind of passed it. So I think uh, maybe Kyo was doing something in the street and then Kyoko saw him and died for him or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Yandere said only in a wiki. All right. But we after that, we, we got to uh, Toru and Kyo. We got, we got some moments for them um, where... One one thing I like about Kyo is the fact that he'll notice the little things about Toru, and I think that's a, oh, yeah. that's a good part of their relationship. Like, you know, I I don't imagine that Toru wears that scarf often, so the fact that he remembered <clears throat> that that's her scarf, I think that's like you know, a charm his character because he he notices a lot of the uh, little emotions and quirks that Toru has. So I think, yeah. you know, they were pushing a relationship with uh, that scene. And uh, yeah. Yuki was trying to cook. What's, what's up with your boy? Oh, I think. Wait, Spirit's still there? Oh, that boy on the. Oh, man, they came to the house. They feeling like that, boy. Yeah, give me a few seconds. I'll be right back. All right. Uh. It's not much to talk about after that scene, but well, I, I guess I'll just finish one point real quick. Um, yeah, with the whole with the whole Yuki thing, uh, <laughs> I don't know why the nigga thought he could cook. He may be brain smart, but if y'all pay attention to Yuki and his character, he doesn't have a clean room. He don't take care of himself. He don't know how to tie a tie. I'm not trusting that nigga in the kitchen. You better wh- whip up some instant noodles or get a bento box for the convenience store. I'm not letting them in my kitchen. Shigure can't cook either, I, I don't think. I think they normally get take uh, takeout or something. So, I don't know what that boy was thinking. But, uh, uh I think that's pretty much it for the episode, though. Uh, I, I guess I'll get Perry's thoughts when he come back, but I want to say overall, I thought the episode was real good. Good pilot episode introduced uh, a character I think is going to be integral in the story, Rain. I'm excited to see what she's going to do with the curse going forward. We saw her and Rain linking up at the end of the episode, so they're going to connect and maybe they'll be uh, a, a duo kind of like how Toru and Rain were. We uh we got Utani no- noting that Kareno is Kareno Soma, so we got the prospect that she may link up with her, uh, link up with him, uh, on okay, her I'm own. All right, we, I'm just giving my closer thoughts and things because okay. that's pretty much it for the episode. Um, and you know, Hana and Megami doing their thing. But that Megami is a funny character. We need to talk about him, but he's a funny character to me too. I like his I like his little catchphrase that he always says. My heart pounds as I'm surrounded by older women. Older women, yeah. He keeps saying that <laughs> shit. And the fact that he like it's always funny when he says it. When him and Hana do anything, they always got that dead deadpan, um, emotionless tone of speech. So <laughs> whenever they say something, you just be like, are you capping or like are you serious? Um, uh, I, re- I think I think it's it episode as well when he was like talking about Utani. He was like, uh, "It seems you have loved and lost." She's yeah. like, "Wait, what? Yeah. Ooh, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do nothing because that nigga be spitting." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he he hasn't lied yet. Uh, so sh- shout out to Mega Beam. 
Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it, it was a good episode. Uh, Perry, your closing thoughts, predictions, anything? Uh, I think it was a really good, really good episode start season one because usually I notice like m- most anime start season one ep- like the first episode of a new season is always kind of slow but this episode started off with a bang and I really appreciate it especially with like the way we had to go through for Fruit Basket episodes so I'm like I'm yeah. enjoying it yeah I think this was a good good starting episode Uh, definitely better than season two's first episode because I think that episode I, I love Matoko but I think this episode introduced something that's going to be so important to the plot later on, which is rain mm-hmm. that, you know, you can't help, but st- you stay, have your eyes glued to this episode. So I'm excited what to see what they're going to do next with it. I've been told that this season in general is going to be a lot darker than the other, other seasons, which is crazy because fruits basket does get dark. Um, yeah. A lot of the times with the trauma they go through in their childhood and, um, the toxic relationships that they built but yeah that's pretty much all we had to say about the episode guys i appreciate everybody who showed up kako ea qrw6 morgan yandere muppet stony i didn't even see stony ranch shane mac 2d came through light sidarius joker joker came through momentarily uh i'm pretty sh- i think i got everybody if i missed you i apologize but First episode of the Ox and Rap podcast, or for short, 